Good afternoon, everybody. What is going on? I am Jeff Grant Media, and today's real user review, we will take a look at the Gustin number no. 75 Okiyama standard jeans in the straight cut. Now, Gustin did send me these jeans as a sample for review, but all the opinions in this video are mine and mine alone. I did not share this content with Gustin prior to the publication. They will see this when you do. In addition to that, there is an affiliate link in the description box down below. If you are considering buying these jeans or any other product from Gustin, please consider using that link. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I do get a small percentage of that sale kicked back to me, and all the money goes back to the channel, helping me produce more content so consumers can make informed purchasing decisions. And this is my very first product from Gustin. So going into this review, I had a wide open mind because I'd never had any product from Gustin, but I did know a little bit about the company and they are a pretty unique company in the fact that a lot of their products are crowdsourced. So this was the number 75 Okiyama standard that was in their stock. So they do have stock items as well that you can go to the website and buy, but they crowdsource a lot of their new materials, a lot of their new denims that they're thinking about put out, their shirts and whatnot. So it's essentially like any other crowdsourcing, they will have a campaign and if it gets funded, they will produce that garment. And I believe they're actually crowdsourcing another version of the number 75 Okiyama standard right now. So once the stock version of this is gone, they're gone. If the new version gets crowdsourced they will and funded, they will actually produce it and it'll go back into production and so on and so forth with all of the other items. So they have some really, really cool denims, a lot of things that I'm, I'm actually pretty keen to take a look at. It's really interesting that, you know, they don't have to put all of this money into purchasing denim, producing a garment that may or may not sell. So they're going to make some samples, take some photos, give you a write up a description of it. And then they're going to allow you to decide if it's something that you want to buy. And if so, then they will actually go ahead and produce it. So it's pretty cool that they do that. It allows them to actually like source and sample a lot of different things that a lot of companies can't do because they are relying on your feedback to let them know if that's something that they should pursue or not. If it is, obviously you will fund the project and they will go ahead and produce it, manufacture it, and sell it. And if it does really well, then you'll get a stock version of it. So that's one really, really cool, interesting fact about Gustin. And I really like the way that they're doing that. So with that being said, let's talk about the number 75 Okiyama standard. And with that, we're gonna start with the specs of the jeans. The number 75 Okiyama standard is made from a 14 and a half ounce selvage denim that is made in the Okiyama prefecture of Japan, hence the name. They come in at $161 USD. They are available in a straight fit as seen here, as well as a slim and skinny fit. The jeans start out in a raw deep blue indigo, which will age into some of those amazing fades that we picture when we think about selvage denim. While the denim to make these jeans is sourced from Okayama, Japan, they are cut and sewn in California. One of the cool key features of these jeans is they feature an orange selvage ID, which I really like because it kind of pops and stands out from all of the other selvage denim that's out there. And one very important note is that Gustin does not follow vanity sizing. So as always, please check the size charts and compare them with your actual waist size. And that's where we're gonna start right there with vanity sizing. I'm gonna answer a question that you may not even know that you had, what is vanity sizing? Well, if you buy any jeans off the shelf, at least in America, your vanity sizing is actually about two and a half inches bigger than the tagged waist size, meaning I wear a 32 waist in basically all vanity size jeans, which means that the actual circumference of those jeans is about 34 to 34 and a half inches. So when I buy a 32 inch waist pair of jeans off the shelf, they're actually measuring at about 34 and a half inches. So measure your pair of jeans. It's pretty simple. Just lay them out on the table, take a soft measuring tape if possible. If not, any tape measure will work and just measure the width of the jeans and then double that and you will get your actual vanity sizing. If you do have a cloth measuring tape, go ahead and just wrap that around yourself and put it where you would wear your jeans and that's your actual waist size. So take that, consult with the size charts and then you're gonna go ahead and see what actual size you wear. So these are a 34 waist in Gustin size because that is a 34 and a half inch waist, which is what my vanity size would be. So my standard off the shelf pair of Levi's that I wore 20 years ago were a 32, and which means they were a 34 and a half. So this is the same size circumference with the waist of my old standard vanity size when I would buy jeans off the shelf. 
So always check your size guides, but always also know what your actual waist measurements are. And don't just say, I wear a 32 inch waist, I have a 32 inch ins or a 32 waist, that's what I'm gonna buy because that's not the case. Jeans will stretch, but they're not gonna stretch that much. You got about maybe an inch of play if your body needs it. They're really only gonna stretch to what your body will actually allow. And if they stretch more than that, you bought the wrong size jeans. So always know your waist size and always know what the size of the waist of the jeans you're buying and always consult that size guide because every brand is different and within brands, even different cuts of the same, even different cuts of jeans inside the same brand will vary slightly. Okay. Now, I have now been wearing these Gustin number 75 Okiyamas for 22 wears out of the past month or so. And the thing that I have been doing is I've actually been marking the pocket bag so I know everywhere. So every morning as I'm putting them on, I will put a little dash mark on the pocket bag and then I know how many wears I have had. If you have at least a white pocket bag, just grab yourself a, a fine tip Sharpie. If you can get the archival ones that are less likely to smear and just do a little dash. And what I did was you saw there in that picture, I wrote the date of the first time I wore them and I just marked it every single morning. Now I also did one cold soak as you can see from the image earlier. And the reason I did that cold soak was it got pretty warm here lately. And I was wearing these, we've been doing a lot, try to cram in a lot of shoes for work prior to the, the weather changing. And uh, I feel like it's gonna go from really nice to really cold this year. So we're just trying to get some really good shoots in. And I've been running around and it's been like 80 degrees. So I got a little sweaty. These jeans got a little bit stinky. So I, I did a cold soak in them. That was the first cold soak. I didn't pre-soak these at all because they felt really, really nice out of the box. But when I did that first cold soak, you could see the water tur did turn a little yellow. There was a little brackish water in there, but ultimately they weren't that bad. The water wasn't that dark, meaning there wasn't a lot of starches in there, nor were they really that dirty from me wearing them. And they weren't visibly dirty. They were just kind of starting to pick up a little bit of an odor from me wearing and sweating in them. So ultimately these did not need an initial pre-soak. And even when I did my initial cold soak after I wore them for about a month, I didn't get a lot of those starches on them. So these material, this material, this number 75 Okiyama was really, really nice. It was very comfortable to wear right out of the box. It wasn't too stiff or rigid. Being 14 and a half ounce denim, they weren't super thick. So I wasn't getting any of those red marks behind my knees from wearing them because the denim was so stiff. It's a really good all around weight. I'd say that 12 and a half to 14 ounce denim is a really good all around weight to wear year round. You can wear them in the summer when it's warmer. You can still wear them in the winter when it's still getting kind of cold out if you live in a colder climate. So good all around weight, 14 and a half ounce denim, very comfortable right out of the box. Did not need to do a pre-soak. And when I finally did do my first cold soak, even with a lot of sweat that was in them, I didn't get a lot of brownish brackish water. It was, I would say, pretty clear for a selvage denim jean, especially doing a cold soak when you're just gonna get all of those starches out of them, which if you ever did a cold soak, a pre-cold soak on a pair of jeans or a jean jacket that you wore prior to wearing it, the water would probably be pretty dark brown. And most of what you're getting is the starches that are coming out of that material and mix now the starches with any of the sweat and grime that came off my body from wearing them. And there wasn't that much. I would say that water was pretty clear for what I did in these jeans. Now, what you really wanna know are the fades of these jeans and how they've been wearing. So I, again, I have 22 wears in these jeans out of the past month or so. And uh, yeah, with a mid-weight denim, which I'm gonna call this, you really need to have about two months of wear before those fades start to pop. We are gonna start seeing some fades on the pocket where my wallet is and also where I've been carrying my pocket knife on my other pocket. Unless you're working in a trade, you're really gonna need about two months to start really seeing those fades pop. If you're wearing these to work, like me, I work in an office, I'm also a professional videographer, so I'm running around on shoots quite a bit. Um, I am getting a fair amount of wear out of these jeans, but if I were doing some sort of trade, these would fade so much quicker. But if I'm wearing these to the office or casually around, it's gonna take about two months before they start to really pop. So that being said, let's see what I'm getting after a month of doing these, wearing these in the office and wearing these on shoots. Here we see my back right pocket, which is where I keep my wallet. And this is probably one of the best fades that we're seeing so far because my wallet is always in this pocket. So I'm sitting on it every time I'm in the car, every time I'm in my desk chair. And when I'm bending and moving around, we are getting a lot of fades happening here. And after only 22 wears, you can see the actual outline of my wallet in these jeans. It is there even when my wallet is not in my pocket. So you can tell exactly where my wallet sits in my pocket all the time. 
Now this is my back left pocket, and you can see this is where I clip my pocket knife. Now the fade here is certainly more prominent, but there's only two little fade marks here that you can see from where my knife presses into the denim, and that's just because this is a pocket knife, so it is more hard and more rigid where my wallet is soft, so there will be a little bit of compression and smooshing around, if you will, of my wallet, where the knife is always going to keep its form, and it's going to be a lot more sturdy as I'm sitting down, so it will always have the same shape to it. Now, flipping these jeans over, my front left pocket, it is pretty hard to see, but I am getting the faint outline of my cell phone fade in my pocket. You can kind of see it here. You can very lightly see the lines right here, and as the auto the white balance changes it kind of washes it out but there is a very faint outline of my cell phone from sitting in my pocket there pulling back out here to the front of my knees you're not really seeing a lot of fading happening here uh, which is a little surprising because I have been on quite a bit of shoots lately so I have been bending and moving quite a bit but I'm still not seeing a lot of those knee fades coming in again they generally take about two months and once they pop they'll probably pop pretty quickly but I have another month or so of wear before that really starts to show if we go to the back of my knees, you can see there is quite a bit of creasing here behind my knees. I don't quite have those honeycomb fades yet, but I did just do that cold soak about two or three days ago, and all of these creases basically stayed in the jeans. They did not wash out, so these are basically set in the jeans. So these are also going to start to fade and wear in in about another month. I'll probably have some nice honeycomb fades starting here. Now, if we go to the most unflattering of places on the jeans, we go to the crotch and seat area. You can see maybe it, there is a very light fade starting right here and a little bit right here. They're not coming through on camera very well, but it's very, very light and I could barely see it with the naked eye. And that's about it. If we flip them over to the seat, we're still not really seeing a ton. That is the same line that we saw earlier, but we're not getting a lot of fade in the seat yet or even on the inner thighs where they kind of rub, especially where the seam is the high point. We're not getting a lot of fading here yet but give me another uh, three four weeks and I'm sure that will start to pop as well and lastly we're seeing quite a bit of cropping on the underside of my belt now this is my flint and tinder uh, veg tan belt and there was some uh, crocking on the underside of this belt prior to wearing these jeans but I was mostly wearing these with a uh, already washed and worn in pair of brave star jeans and if we want to take a look maybe like the tip there that's about what it looked like all the way around just kind of the edges not a lot so a lot of this crocking here is actually from these Gustin number 75 Okiyamas and I'm not mad about it I like it I, it's kind of the reason I've been wearing these this lighter veg tan belt quite a bit is I want it to fade and take on the color from my selvage denim so I've been wearing it quite a bit you can see the backside it's not really that bad. Uh, you can see maybe in a couple spots where the actual belt loops kind of go over, there is a little bit of crocking, but on the inside, we are seeing quite a bit. And I did actually notice that, um, I want to say like the first or second day I had these jeans on, I made pasta for dinner and Miss Hazel Fantastic went to eat a meatball. It went for a ride and it didn't land on my jeans, but it splashed on my jeans. So I immediately took a wipe and cleaned off my pants and I had quite a bit of indigo on the wipe as well as the pasta sauce, which is completely fine because you cannot see where the spot of pasta sauce was on these jeans, nor can you tell that I rubbed off a little bit of indigo rapidly trying to get the pasta sauce off the jeans before they stain them. So they do crock just a little bit, uh, I haven't noticed any transfer on any of my other clothing or my couch or my car seat or anything like that, but you know, high contact like your belt or if you get pasta sauce on them and you're using a wipe, you might see a little bit of that indigo coming off until you wash them and in, that extra indigo lifts or you wear them in. Now, let's talk about the styling of these jeans. There's a few style points on these uh, number 75 Okiyamas that I really, really like. And namely, the orange selvage ID that they use. I really like this, this selvage ID. It kind of just helps them stand out a little bit different because generally your selvage ID is red. You could see it up here on one of the belt loops. We have a nice orange selvage ID, as well as a selvage ID that goes along the inside seam of each of these pants. So when you pop that cuff, you're gonna get an orange selvage ID showing on the outside instead of your standard red. 
which I really like. It's something interesting. Yes, a lot of denim brands do use a different color selvage ID, but for the most part, you see a lot of standard red. So seeing the orange is a little bit something a little bit different, and I liked it. It just uh, it just sets these jeans apart just a little bit. Another thing that I really like is even though they have an orange selvage ID, they're actually using some red bar tacking to kind of help stand out in the crowd. You can see that mostly here on the crotch area, as well as some red bar tacking on the bottom seam and the inside of the chain stitch is also red. Also, all of the buttons along the fly and all of the rivets used in the jeans are branded Gustin and they are very, very heavy duty quality and I'm really enjoying them. They don't feel like they're loose or going to fall off at all. So overall, these Gustin number 75 Okiyama standards are a pleasure to wear. They are very comfortable right out of the box. I did not have to do a pre-soak. And even when I finally did soak them after wearing them for a month or so, that water, well, I'm gonna go ahead and say it was basically clear for a selvage denim jean. That was after I got a lot of my sweat in them as well. So I got sweat as well as the starches out of them. And that water was very lightly colored. So no need to do an initial pre-soak. They're comfortable to wear right out of the box. You're not gonna get any sore marks behind your knees. They're not gonna be a little uncomfortable to wear. 14 and a half ounce denim is a really good all around weight to wear. This is a year round denim you can wear this. So if you're coming into selvage denim jeans for the very first time and you're looking at these, it's a great all around denim. They're going to be about the same weight as your standard pair of off the shelf jeans, which come in from about 12 and a half to about 14 and a half ounces. Even though the fades are not popping just yet, they are wearing really, really well. They are not showing any signs of wear or deteriorating. All of the seams and stitches are holding up just fine. Nothing seems to be out of place. And give me another couple of weeks, these fades will really start to pop. They have some nice style points to them being the orange selvage ID as well as the red bar tacking and red chain stitching which just helps to set them apart just a little bit while still staying subtle and classy. So overall I am really happy with these Gustin jeans. They're a pleasure to wear. I'm going to keep wearing them. Hopefully uh, I can give a little at least a short and update soon where I can see these fades really starting to pop because the pictures that they have on the website of these jeans broken in and worn in, these are producing those like classic selvage denim fades. It's gonna take some time to get there. They don't happen in a month. They don't happen with 22 wears. They take a little bit more time. Give me closer to that, you know, like 50, 60 wear, and uh, I'll start to see some of those fades really popping through. So I'm gonna continue to wear these. Stay tuned for some updates. Uh, these are a really nice jean. If you're looking at these as maybe your first pair of selvage jean, this is a really good first pair to jump into. It's a really good weight. They're really comfortable right out of the box. They don't have a very big long break-in period where you're gonna be uncomfortable wearing them. Just please make sure you know your waist size and check the size charts because these do not follow vanity sizing. And if you don't know what vanity sizing is, you don't believe me, grab a measuring tape, grab a pair of jeans that fit you well, go ahead and measure that waist. And then you can compare the tagged waist size to the actual waist size of the jeans. But all that said and done, yes, I recommend these jeans. Yes, I like them. And yes, I'm going to continue to wear these jeans. So if you like this video or any of my other videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that big red button and ring that bell right next to it so you get notifications the next time I post a brand new video. Good night.